Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dean and It Yourself. In today's video, I'm going to be working on a Nintendo Wii. Um, I got a Wii from a friend of mine and it turns out that the drive was just ejecting the disc, it wouldn't stay in. So in this fix, it's going to address all the issues with the DVD drive, whether it's a disc read error, um, the disc not staying in, or the game just not playing. Basically, in order to do this, we're going to have to replace the entire drive. And a lot of people ask me if it's worth replacing the whole drive. And the answer to, my question, to that question is, yeah, the drive only costs between 20 and 30 bucks. So it's not worth even trying to repair it. We might as well just replace the whole drive. Now, here's a, here's a disclaimer. There are a lot of screws involved in this fix. But don't worry. We're going to go really slow. I'm going to take my time. And here's a trick I like to use whenever I'm dealing with a lot of screws or I have a project where there's a multitude of different screw sizes. What I like to do is I remove the screws and when I remove them from the holes I like to place them beside the holes and take a picture of it. That way when I'm putting it back together I know wh what screw goes where and if I don't I can always just look back at the picture and there it is. For um, the DVD drive I will leave a link below in the description where you can buy the DVD drive so if you need one, you don't have to go hunt in the net. It's right below. If you guys like my content, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and turn on your notifications. That way you can get notified whenever I upload new content. Also, leave a comment below if you found this video helpful or if there's another video you'd like for me to do. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into the video. Before we begin guys, we're going to need some tools. We're going to need a screwdriver and a screwdriver extension. Also some bits, Phillips, tri-wing and flathead. We're also going to need a set of tweezers and a pair of needle nose pliers. I'll leave a link in the description below just in case you guys don't have these tools. You guys will be able to find them. We're going to start by flipping the Wii on its side and opening the door. There are two screws underneath. Once you have the door open, just lift up on the door and remove it. It's pretty easy. Set it aside. Once you have it set aside, you'll be able to see the two Phillips screws located here and here. Now the screws are located, we can go ahead and remove them. Now you can open the second door on the back of the Wii and there'll be another screw revealed. Remove the door just like the old one and then locate the other Phillips screw. Remove the screw and set it aside. With the Phillips screws removed, now we can pry up on the cover plate. Be gentle, it just snaps into place, but don't pry too hard, you don't want to break it. Go ahead and remove it and then set it aside. With the cover plate removed, we've now exposed two more tri-wing screws. Go ahead and remove the tri-wing screws and set them aside. There are two more screws located on the same side, but these screws are Phillips screws instead. Go ahead and remove these screws and set them aside. Now let's flip the Wii over. You're going to find a hidden screw under this leg and there's a screw by the battery compartment. To reveal the screw under the leg, use a flathead screwdriver to pry up on the leg and set it aside. Now you'll see the screw located below. This is a tri-wing screw. So let's go ahead and remove this screw. Take your time. You don't need to rush it. Now let's go ahead and remove the Phillips screw by the battery compartment. With the screw removed covering the battery compartment, we can go ahead and remove the battery compartment. Once we removed it, you can set it aside and notice there's another screw located under the battery compartment here. This screw is a tri-wing screw, so go ahead and remove this screw again and set it aside. I know there's a lot of screw guys, but just be patient, take your time. On the same side of the battery compartment, we have three hidden screws underneath these pieces of tape. Use your flathead screwdriver to pry up the tape to reveal the screws. You can go ahead and remove the first screw, but also remember there are two other screws hidden by tape as well. Remove the screws, taking your time, and go ahead and set them aside. 
The two other screws can be seen here. You can go ahead as well, remove the tape, and then take the screws out. Now you can go ahead and flip the Wii over. You'll see two legs with screws underneath them. Take your screwdriver and remove them gently so that you don't break them. Once you remove them, you'll find the two triwing screws below. You may have to use your extension bit to fit and reach them. Go ahead and remove the triwing screws and set them aside. On the opposite side, you'll find two hidden screws hidden by tape. Use your screwdriver again and remove the tape and then go ahead and remove these screws. And notice sounds repetitive, but remove the screws and set them aside. Well, those are all the screws that are holding it in place. Now we can remove the faceplate. Gently pry on the faceplate and you'll be able to see a cable that's connected to the board. Use your needle nose pliers and pull on this very gently so you don't break it. Once removed, you can set the faceplate aside. Now we can remove the cover of the Wii. Gently lift up on the cover and you'll see a shield below. This protects the DVD drive. Remove the shield and expose the DVD drive below. Now we're ready to install the new drive. Remove it from the packaging and set it aside. Guys, the DVD drive is only held in by these four screws located here. Once you've found the screws, take your Phillips screwdriver and you can just remove these screws and set them aside. We're almost there. Now comes the fun part. Tilt the drive, but don't remove it. There's a ribbon cable below that you can use your tweezers to gently pry over to give you more access. Once this cable is removed, you can remove it by simply unplugging it from the board. Once it's unplugged, you'll now have access to the ribbon cable. The ribbon cable is only held in place by a clamp or it's like a lever. You can go ahead and pry up on this lever and the ribbon cable will simply unsnap and you'll be able to remove the drive. Once it's unsnapped, remove it and then set the drive aside. Now let's go ahead and install the new drive. Pry up on the lever to receive the ribbon cable and go ahead and insert the ribbon cable. It may take a little bit of patience, but be very gentle. You don't want to break the cable. Once it's inserted, you can go ahead, close the lever, and it will lock the ribbon cable in place. Once it's locked in place, you can go ahead and plug the pins back into the board and tuck the cables away. Once the cables are tucked away, the installation is pretty much complete. Go ahead and tighten the four screws that are used to hold the drive in place. But before we put it back together, let's test it to make sure it works. In the video above, you can see that we we're able to put the discs in and the disc was able to be read and ejected when we pressed the eject button. So that was able to confirm that the installation was a success and that the drive is working as intended. So pretty much we knew that everything went according to plan. Now that we've confirmed that the Wii is working, let's go ahead and put it all back together in reverse order. Take your time, put it back together in the order in which you took it apart. I know you guys are excited to get the Wii and get it up and running, but this is a very important step. We want to make sure that we don't break anything while we're putting it back together. So just take your time. Um, if you guys don't remember where your screws are, I hope you took pictures like I said in the beginning. That way you can use them as reference. But go ahead, tighten up all the screws and put it all back together. One thing I have to say for sure is Nintendo definitely did not intend on us working on these drives by ourselves. I don't know why they had to put all the different type of screws in, but I guess they want to make money. They want you to send it to them to fix it. But I hope you guys were able to follow along and fix the Nintendo. And if you did, congrats. It wasn't that bad.
All right, we're back. That wasn't too bad, guys, right? I know there were a lot of screws, but slow and easy, we did it. We got the drive working and everything works just like new. I'm sure if you guys have kids, they're probably going crazy. That That is a superhero. He fixed my Nintendo OE. But good job, guys. If you found the video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you guys found this helpful. See you in the next video. Peace.